everyone mm -hmm. see you every day. Look an example of a causal relationship to show the difference between a dependent variable and independent variable and also how do extraneous variables play a role. The link to that video is in the description section below. In today's video, I am going to explain the difference between extraneous variable course is to understand what is the meaning of an intervariable. So let's get started. I will use two examples in today's video so that you find it easy to understand and then you can use the knowledge of this video and apply it to your own research. So first I will explain what do I mean by intervariable. So let's say here for an example I am trying to establish that uh, poverty has a relationship with longevity uh, in society. So what does that mean is that poverty, I'm classifying poverty um, as the, uh, as poverty if you don't know what poverty means, I have put the definition here, it is a state or condition in which a person or community lacks the financial resources and essentials for a minimum standard of living, which means they are from a low socioeconomic status. So I'm trying to establish a relationship between poverty and longevity. Uh, longevity of course uh, refers to uh, how uh, how uh, the, the, the age of a person or how long they are alive for and the higher the longevity means they are alive for a longer time and low longevity means that of course they are alive for a shorter time. So here poverty becomes the independent variable and longevity becomes a dependent variable. Now one might think that poverty and longevity have no relationship on their own. So there should not be any relationship between poverty and longevity. Uh, because how long a person lives for has nothing to do with poverty. But here I am trying to establish a relationship between the two. So if I feel or if uh, I feel that the reviewer or the examiner might question me on how I am establishing relationship between two variables which have, may have nothing to do with the other, I have to introduce something called the intervening variable. Now what does that intervening variable do? It basically establishes a relationship between these two variables. Uh, otherwise, they would not have a relationship. So in this case, the intervening variable becomes the lack of access to healthcare systems, hospitals, medical facilities, etc. So what does that mean? That means that poverty does not affect longevity unless poverty is causing an not be able to access the healthcare systems, hospitals, medical facilities. So poverty on its own as an independent variable does not cause any change in how uh, long the person lives for, the longevity of the person, or how, how, how short is their lifespan. It can become a contributing factor to longevity if that poverty is leading to that person or that community or that population or that sample to not be able to access the healthcare systems, hospitals, medical facilities. So of course, if they are falling sick and they do not have access to medicines or doctors or hospitals, then of course, they might fall seriously ill and they might die and which will result to a long, low lifespan. And if somebody is classified as a poor person or a person from low socioeconomic status, but can access doctors, medical facilities, medicines, then of course, that they will live for a longer time. So that is what is intervening variable. So that intervening variable when introduced in this research study, it establishes a relationship between an independent variable and dependent variable ordinarily when they don't have uh, or there is no causal relationship between them or they don't have a relationship that you can identify. So that is what an intervening variable is. It is essential in such cases. I'll take another example and I'll show you and then I'll show you how do extraneous variables play a role in this kind of research. So let's take another example here. So uh, here we are trying to establish the relationship between mortality and fertility. So if you don't know what mortality means, mortality means the percentage of deaths per population. Uh, what is the rate of deaths in a population or in a community? And fertility is the rate of births in a population. Uh, how frequently are uh, children being born in a community, which is of course to the female but how frequently are they born uh, and of course the male population also plays a role in that. So on its own if you try to think then you might wonder what does the rate of death 
have anything to do with the rate of interest. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with it. So if you think about it, the rate at which people are dying, why should it have a relationship with the rate at which people are being born? So if I am the researcher and I'm trying to establish a relationship where you as the examiner or the viewer might question my research or might question my assumption uh, as to that the basis of the premise of my research itself does not hold any value. This is where I will introduce an intervening variable. So let's understand what is an independent variable. So independent variable, as you guys know, or I will give a recap, on its own for the variation in the independent variable is not caused due to changes in other variables. However, dependent variable is a variable where the changes in the independent variable or changes in other variables cause a change in the dependent variable. So I'll explain what I mean. Let's go further into it. So here if I say that the rate at which people are dying has a relationship with the rate at which people are born or mortality has a relationship with fertility depending on how frequently men and women use contraceptives or birth control. So let me explain this. So let's say that there is a high rate of death in a community. All right. So if there is a high rate of death in the community, and let's say the population of the community is 10,000 people, and there is a high rate of death in the community. So what do I mean by high rate of death? That means in a population of 10,000 people, if 500 people are dying every year, Without us adding to the population, then of course the mortality rate will be high. That means the population will reduce at a much faster rate because no people are being added. But if the fertility is leading to people being added and still there are 500 deaths happening every year, then the mortality rate will be low because if 500 people are dying but we are adding 1000 people every year due to high fertility, then the mortality rate becomes low because you are adding more people than people are dying. However, this will only depend on if people or women or men use contraceptives or birth control. So if they don't use contraceptives or birth control, then there's a higher chances of uh, high rate of fertility, more children being born. But if the people are using birth control and they are not, they're choosing not to have children, uh, rather than children not being born, then of course that plays a role. So mortality will have a higher rate if people are choosing not to have children. So on the other, on the flip side, if you see that mortality has a higher rate, if people are unable to have children uh, and the population is not increasing, but if people are choosing not to have children rather than people not being able to have children, then that plays a role. So when you are studying a population of 10,000 people and the rate of deaths is 500 people per year, and no population is being added due to low fertility rate, then the mortality rate goes high. Here, we have to investigate why population is not being added. Is it because people are not being able to have children? Or is it people are choosing not to have children? So that is, the, that is what forms the connection between mortality and fertility in this case. Now, here, only the men and women's uh, choosing to use contraceptives of birth control that cannot form the only relationship here. So there might be other reasons because of the children are not being born. So we cannot say that children are not being born because people are not choosing to have children and because people are using contraceptives of birth control. There could be other reasons why children are not being born. And what are those reasons? And that is where the extraneous variables come into play, which you have to address or you have to account for in your research to show your examiners and reviewers that you are aware of these factors and you address these factors uh, and you found how they affect the dependent variable. So extraneous variables are those variables which influence the dependent variable, but they are not the independent variable. So you are not trying to establish a relationship between the extraneous variables and dependent variable. You are trying to establish a relationship between independent variable and dependent variable. However, you have to account for or address those extraneous variables to show that it was the change in the independent variable that caused a change in the dependent variable and not because the extraneous variables were playing a role. So let's take an example. In this case, the first example could be uh, the education of people. So say if uh, people are highly educated here and they feel that we should uh, do family planning and not have more than one child per family, then of course that will play a role. So 
So although they might not be using contraceptives or birth control, the people are highly educated and they feel that they don't want to contribute to the population load and they're choosing to have one child per family, then that will play a role. So again, let me recap here. So rate of mortality is higher because rate of fertility is lower. But why is rate of fertility lower? Is it because people can't have children or are people choosing not to have children? But if people are choosing not to have children, or if people are choosing to have children, but why is the fertility rate low? That is because the people are, although they are choosing to have children, they are choosing to have only one child per family. So that is why uh, the education here becomes an extra interest variable where you have to address for this. So you have to say that yes, the mortality rate goes up as the fertility rate goes down. But why is the fertility rate going down? It's because the men and women are using birth control. But although, or men or women uh, are using birth control, but they are using birth control. Why? Because education here plays a big role. So if people are uh, not much educated, then they are using birth control. Uh, they are not using birth control, but if men or women are highly educated, then they are using birth control. Something like that. Other could be the attitude. So our uh, attitude towards the use of contraceptives. So are people being forced to use contraceptives? Are people choosing to use contraceptives? Do they have a positive attitude towards contraceptives? So again, let's take the flip, uh, let's flip the example here. So you will say, oh, the mortality rate is low because the fertility rate is very high. There are more people being added into the population than people dying. That's because people have found to have a poor attitude towards contraceptives or birth control. So, so again, you are trying to establish a relationship here by saying that, yes, men and women are not using birth control. Why? Because they have a poor attitude. They feel that uh, it is against uh, from maybe their religion or philosophy or, uh, or uh, their education or uh, the guidance of their parents. Uh, could be many factors. Similarly, the socioeconomic status. So maybe people from a low socioeconomic status tend to have more children uh, so that uh, for any reasons, uh, maybe they want to use them as uh, laborers and as uh, earners and family providers. Whereas people of higher socioeconomic status, they're choosing to have lesser children or vice versa. Maybe people of higher socioeconomic status are choosing to have more children because they can afford to have more children. And people of low socioeconomic status are choosing to have uh, lesser children because they can't afford to maintain those children. So is that playing a reason uh, instead of the contraceptives or birth control? Which of the women in the community, so you are choosing a sample size and you are choosing, uh, and you are choosing a sample size of the population uh, if, if most of the women are more than 50 years old, then of course it could be a biological factor and not because they are not choosing uh, contraceptives or birth control. Uh, women of more than uh, 50 years of age maybe find it hard to just conceive children. So you can't, that is not the right population for you to study. You need to choose a population where, uh, especially here uh, in this relationship, where you are uh, choosing a population which of women who uh, can easily have children. So if, if you have sample people, who are more than 50 years or 60 years of age, then you have to address that in your research and say that, you know, out of the 100 people I studied, maybe 30 people were more than 50 years or 60 years of age, and I found that biologically they were not being able to have children, not because they were using contraceptives or birth control. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, sometimes the religious beliefs uh, don't allow people to uh, have less children, or maybe uh, when they are required to have more children, or maybe they are against the use of birth control, rather, I should say, uh, not the other. The, so some religions, maybe they oppose against the use of birth control and contraceptives, and that is the reason people are choosing uh, not to use it, and that is why the rate of fertility will be high. Uh, motivation. Uh, what is the motivation uh, of people who are choosing to use birth control or not choosing to use birth control? Uh, the motivation could be a factor by maybe uh, the population that you are studying uh, has uh, a very ambitious uh, men and women who are choosing not to have children because they want to focus on their career and uh, they don't want to get distracted by having children around them. So it is not because they are using contraceptives or birth control, it is because uh, they are motivated by other factors such as the focus on career. The quality of health care here, for example, if somebody is a doctor or a medicine man or a health man, he has access to, so the advice that they have access to, so maybe the mortality rate could be high uh, because they don't have access to good healthcare systems. The fertility rate could be low uh, because again they don't have access to good healthcare systems 
uh, or, 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 or uh, they are not getting into the proper advice from the doctors and the nurses, so they are not being able to manage uh, the rate of births or rate of deaths. So this also plays a factor. So here again, uh, if you have to establish, so you have to establish a relationship where you say that yes, um, high mortality is due to low fertility, and that is because people are choosing to use contraceptive and birth control. This is a relationship you have to establish. But what are the factors that are leading to people uh, choosing to use birth control and contraceptives are those extra necessary factors. Uh, or what are the other variables that are playing a role in having a low fertility? Uh, because obviously there's a high mortality is something that again you have to address. So the more the, inter the extraneous variables you address in your research, you account for them, you include them as part of your can justify the reason for doing so based on data and evidence. Uh, this will make your journal or your paper or your thesis a high quality thesis and the reviews and examiners will be just right. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Keep watching and I look forward to your comments and feedback. The whole idea behind starting this channel was to learn from one another and for you to benefit and for me to benefit from you as well. Uh, we are all learners and uh, bye for now. I'll see you soon. Bye.